going to take you on a journey, um, and essentially, Signals Notebook at Merck Electronics, why we need a good chemical inventory solution, what it was like before we started, what Signals Notebook was like when we started, our pilot study and its outcomes, our co-development process with Revity, the second pilot study, and now our go-live um, in the first wave for this and where we're looking to take this in the future. So, um, Signals Notebook at Merck Electronics, we've been live since 20. One, uh, we now have about 550 users and 67,000 um, real and migrated experiments. And we use it for experimentation across the um, materials workflow, synthesis, formulation, and application testing. And managing materials is a key part of this. So there are a whole set of real benefits to having an electronic lab notebook. It improves storage and it creates more structured data which is good for analytics. It improves data sharing which boosts collaboration. It significantly improves the searchability of R&D data and removes the need for work to be repeated. It significantly improves information security by access control. and it enables advanced analytics because without structured data it's more difficult to do the analytics in the first place. It improves digitalization, but last and by no means least, it improves laboratory safety as well because of transparency. So why do we need a good chemical inventory solution? So in most experiments, materials are the key. Almost all experiments involve materials. <coughs> So whether it's a reagent for synthesis, a component for formulations, or materials for application testing, they need to be managed, okay? So have I got them? Um, where are they? Are they hazardous and I have to put in control mechanisms? Is there some kind of expiry, meaning I can't use it? Uh, is it a regulated material for whatever reason which I need to more carefully control? And so when you add all of that together, Chemical inventory is the solution and preferably one that is tightly integrated into an electronic lab notebook. So where did we start with this? So um, we went live in 21 with, so when I talk about Melinda, this is Merck Electronics Laboratory Information and Data. It's the Merck Electronics instance of Signals Notebook, okay? We went live with a minimum viable product to get people started. And as soon as we went live, we started to gather user feedback. You know, what's good about it, what needs to be improved. And from that, there was a strong request for chemical inventory. And we found that across our business sector, the materials management and approach towards chemical inventory was inconsistent. The change to an ELN is a considerable change management activity. And the change management that's required to also move to uh, Unified chemical inventory shouldn't be underestimated as well. So we began to gather requirements. What were the key needs of the lab staff? And this was where we were. This was what we found. To start off with, the experimental data before the ELN was scattered around, inventory management ranged from legacy applications to Excel sheets, and safety data sheet management ranged from paper printouts to other solutions okay so this was very fragmented and that didn't give us a good starting position but we have a vision and the vision is that we bring this all together okay and <coughs> what are the key requirements for a chemical inventory this is what we got from the users so there was a whole range of different things that came out as being important. Okay, so this was the starting point for us. How was Signals, Note in, how was Signals Notebook inventory when we started? Okay, um, so I'll shout out to Jen here um, <laughs> because she has been the absolute star in our journey here on the uh, Revity side. So. Um, containers and Locations was launched as a beta in March 21, around the same time that we went live. 
we started to, uh, you can see here, that was what it looked like when we went live. This was what it did when we went live. And on that basis, what we had got in terms of requirements from users, together with what was on offer, gave us enough confidence to initiate a first pilot study, okay, to test the water with a small group and see whether this would work for us. So we planned a pilot study um, according to a fairly uh, sort of prescriptive method. We selected the sites, identified key users, so people who understood inventory who would also be um, choosy enough to tell us the good and tell us the bad. Um, we planned the study to make it as realistic as possible. We conducted the study, so regular dialogue with the key users, troubleshooting on the fly, gathering data, feedback, feedback, feedback the whole time. And <coughs> then we analyzed the outcome, okay? Was it acceptable to users? How functional was it? How usable was it? Um, the outcome of the first pilot study was not very good. Um, there were a number of missing functions, and some of those were must-haves, what we call blockers. Without these, the inventory would not be accepted into production. And secondly, in terms of the UX and usability, some of the functions were very clunky. They needed lots of clicks to go from place to place to place, and a lot of repetition as well. And although they're not blocking, they're not very good for usability. So we had to do something about this. Um, I won't go into too much of the detail here, but we outlined a bunch of blocking requirements here. And from that, and in the detailed dialogue with Revity, we were able to identify <coughs> that some of these requirements were things that could be um, solved by new functionality in the Revity Signals code base, but others were not, okay? Either a could not or a would not at the time, and so therefore we had to make our own solutions for these, okay? And this is where some of our homegrown app-built solutions have filled the gap. So this meant there was a shared responsibility to bring this up to the point where it was good enough for us to bring into production. So just to give an insight here, um, we used click count as a mechanism for usability and the number of mouse clicks that are required for standard tasks. So this showed we were able to break this down in terms of material selection processes and it gave us a number, okay, a lot of clicks for this process. So don't worry about the number now, we'll come back to this a little bit later. Um, but essentially, there were too many clicks. <laughs> too many clicks. Now, as I mentioned, we took the findings of the first pilot study to Revity, um, to the management, to the technical uh, experts, the product owners, and we presented this. We made it clear that there was a need to make inventory fit for purpose, and so we then embarked on working together on co-development to make it better okay and this is where you know the shout goes out to Jen and her team and the target was to resolve the blockers improve the usability and the user acceptance very regular agile type meetings um, started in the middle of 22 prototyping functional mock-ups and lots of user feedback helped us to focus in the right direction. So that took us to a point where there was enough progress by kind of mid of the fourth quarter last year to say, okay, we are now ready to attempt a second pilot. Um, and we were able, as you can see here, that the second pilot study was going to be a real mimic of a production R&D inventory system. Because if this second pilot was a success, we would look to go live with a production instance in 2023, around now. And Revity and Merck 
you know, Revity um, gave us their best efforts to deliver this, and so we set going. And in parallel to this, we put our developers into building apps that filled the gaps for the functions which couldn't or wouldn't be met by Revity. So we wanted to get to a target where we had a production-ready inventory. So like the first study, we selected sites, we planned the study, we did the study, and we analysed the outcome with a clear question to answer, are we go or are we no go for a production rollout? So, a couple of slides on the stuff that we did within Merck as well. So, we developed a suite of apps um, based on Python against the um, Revity Signals API endpoints and Merck web server hosted. And we've done things like um, being able to uh, generate lists for regulatory list reporting against uh, government standards. The notification of threshold limits for uh, chemicals being reached. The notifications about expired or about to expire uh, containers, which is of particular importance where you have materials with a limited shelf life. And specific to us and the materials fields in which we work, um, notification about the need to make checks on uh, materials if they are going to be generating, for example, uh, peroxides, or in the semiconductor field if these are hydridosilanes, that they are building up pressure within their containers. Okay? Now all of this ties in and links to the inventory and the signals notebook function as well. So the outcome then of the second pilot was good. Um, much improved and we got to go for the production rollout from the user base because the functions that were introduced, things were much improved, <coughs> the usability, um, we were able to quantify by repeating the click count and we found that we had a 20% improvement on the click count usability, which is enough to make the users happy. And in addition, all of the apps that we had developed to fulfill other specific functions were liked by the users. So that meant that everything we <coughs> planned was good for production, providing that there were a few remaining blockers um, that needed to be fixed. Okay? So as of about now, um, the US customer units, because we have some groups in the US who still receive materials in gallons and pounds and stuff, um, Revity added this new customer unit functionality. The selection of materials direct from inventory and the decrementing was also delivered all this year. So there was a lot of stuff that was delivered once we had committed to go live. And the two remaining bits, the um, advanced search, the long running discussion about filter contains, and some of the more advanced search things, those are still uh, ongoing. So we got there and we're ready to uh, go live. So we are now going live into production. So we have a uh, rollout across a number of sites in the semiconductor business. And as you can see here, this process has taken a whole set of steps and a lot of people have been involved because you're now introducing this to sites around the world and all of the components that are on this uh, fishbone diagram have to be kind of in place to make sure that we go live in about 12 days time. And fingers crossed, touch wood, looking at the people in the team, <laughs> we are on track, okay, for a go live. And we will then take two months after the go live to really do the hyper care with the users to understand that things are okay to uncover problems that we might not have detected until such time as we went live. So that was the then, that is now, what's the to be situation? Um, 
as mentioned, we are rolling out to a number of sites across Asia and the US. We're doing this because we're replacing an incumbent commercial inventory package with uh, Melinda inventory. That means we've had to do a lot of data migration of the incumbent package into the new one, and we launched into production the apps that I described earlier. Assuming that all of that is a success, we will then, in 24, start to roll this out to other sites around the Merck world. We will be adding in other safety-related apps and interfaces, most specifically with respect to risk assessment. And we're hoping that the uh, reconciliation functions and the search improvements will come from Revity during 24 as well. Once that is a success, then we will look to uh, onboard the remaining parts of the organization, and this is largely here on the Darmstadt campus, um, because they have some integration with other systems. And then finally, our vision is that this inventory will be integrated with the corporate purchasing mod module. So that for this, there will likely need to be some materials request and can ACX improvements um, in this as well. So we hope that by the end of 2025, we've got all of electronics with a unified chemical inventory based upon the <coughs> inventory package. Um, that's the presentation. Um, the most important thing in all of this was the people. So this last slide is really the acknowledgements Thanks to everyone who was involved in this project to date, um, up and down the pyramid within Revity, up and down the pyramid within Merck Electronics, on the IT side, on the business side, our developers, our externals, our key users, and everybody else, because without this collection of people, this would not have happened, okay? So that concludes everything. Thank you for listening, and I'll take your questions. Thank you.